My name's Aaron. And my name's Karen. And we live in Lethbridge, Alberta. Aaron has a big passion for reptiles. I've had lots of reptiles growing up, all sorts of different kinds. I've had so many types of lizards, uh, tons of amphibians as well. We don't have any reptiles currently, so we gave Greg and Lucas a call to come by and give us a hand with that. We're expecting, so right now would be the perfect time to introduce a reptile into our family, just so our little girl can grow up around reptiles. Right, see what you guys brought with you. We brought a few cool reptiles for you today. First, we'll uh, introduce you to the Australian water dragon. This guy's looking to come out real fast. They are arboreal. <laughs> nice. Climbers. Arboreal animals are suited for living in trees, and the Australian water dragon is no exception. However, it also spends a lot of time in the water. Water dragons are actually really great swimmers, and they can spend up to 90 minutes under the water. And they're big. Oh. You'll probably almost double in size. If we give this guy lots of perches, he'll just hang out. If he ever feels scared, he'll jump off the perch and run away and find some uh, dense cover to hide into. Water dragons are great. Uh, they're a little squirrely. Probably not quite what we're looking for, but a fantastic lizard. And this is a chakwala. Oh my goodness. Looks like a pert toad. Yeah, these guys are super cool. They're from Mexico. They'll get a lot of their fluid throughout the day just from eating the fruits and the vegetation. So they don't drink a lot of water freestanding? No. 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 Very cool. Why do they get so wide? Usually what they're doing is they're flattening themselves out. They're trying to get their surface area, their body, as big as they can so that they're drawing in the heat from the sun during the day. It's got some good weight to it. Yeah, <laughs> he's been well fed, that guy. Okay. I definitely want a vegetarian. No crickets in my house, please. <laughs> We're hoping for something that's got a very simple diet. Okay, you know what? This is a Euromastix. Check out this tail. Oh my goodness. The cool thing with these guys is their defense mechanism is their tail. Mm -hmm. uh, being very spiky, they, they try and whip a predator to uh, get away from it. The Euromastix reminds me a lot of my favorite dinosaur, the Ankylosaurus. This was an armored creature that roamed around millions of years ago with a big, long, armored tail that it could defend itself with. This is a Saharan uh, ear mastix, so the colors usually with them is uh, yellows and reds when you get a colorful one. Uh, there's different species that become even more colorful. Mm -hmm. Well, like the ornates. Yeah. Right? You get some really wild colors there. Your mastics are really cool. When they're a little bit colder, they're really dark, and they're using that darkness to be able to absorb as much heat as possible. It's kind of like us wearing a dark shirt in the summer. If we wear a really dark shirt, we're going to heat up a lot faster in that summer sun. I like this guy. He definitely looks like a dinosaur. And vegetarian? Yep, yeah, purely vegetarian uh, and some seeds as well. Uh, I'm thinking the Ermastix is the way to yeah. go. Uh, although, I, I do, I've always had my heart set on an ornate. Okay. I can go to a reptile store or look online and I can find Euromastix. However, finding an ornate Euromastix is going to be a bit more of a challenging thing to do or a, a pair of ornates, even. OK, those are a little bit harder to find. One, two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do some looking into that, see if we can. Saharans are a great pet, but they are definitely more common. So if you're looking for something a little more colorful uh, and a little bit more rare, the ornates are a great choice. All right, so now that we know the lizard that you're looking for, why don't you show us the space that you want us to build an enclosure for? So this is the area that we're looking to uh, put the tank. I've got this little one here right now, but we'll get that out of the way. Where did you find these guys? I, I printed those on my 3D printer. Get out of here. I, <laughs> I, really, I guess it just really shows how much I'm looking forward to having reptiles and amphibians in my life again. That's cool. As far as the theme, uh, ever since I was a kid, I have loved dinosaurs. I never grew out of that thankfully, because it's something that I'm really passionate about. My classroom's full of them. My office is full of them. They're everywhere. We're having a dinosaur-themed baby shower. So it's, <laughs> it's just cool. It's crazy to think that you know, 65 million years ago, right where we're standing right now, the dinosaurs used to just roam around. They owned this spot. Now, here we are, millions and millions of years later. And to have that involved in the tank would be phenomenal. All right, Karen and Aaron, come check out your new enclosures. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, my goodness. And look wow. at all. We actually see the female up top. How did you guys make the skulls? <laughs> Magic. <laughs> <laughs>
Basically, we wanted it to look like we took a slice right out of the earth. We really wanted this theme to match with the area that we're in. It's such a hotbed for the dinosaurs back in the day. This is the backbone of Edmontosaurus. And this is a skull from an Albertosaurus. Both of these dinosaurs would have been roaming around in the Lethbridge area in the uh, Cretaceous period, so about 66 to 78 million years ago. They nailed the dinosaur theme. I, their words can't describe how perfect that tank is. I really love the way that you thought out which dinosaurs to include and that you chose based on the area. Like That's just great planning. And the eggs are awesome too, because we actually have a really good egg fossil bed site just south of Lethbridge here. That's cool, so that's perfect. What did you use for the substrate? I decided to go with a combination of play sand and some cocoa coir, so that if they do ingest any of it, it should pass through their body without causing any impaction. Perfect. Yeah. So that's always a big concern with these guys. Yeah. Being that they like to dig as much as they do, that substrate is going to be fantastic for them uh, to regulate their temperatures and, and just be very healthy and, and active. Yeah, it was really important for the Eurymastics to have several different hides. I've used some slate rocks in the warmer part underneath the lights, so if they want to be on top or underneath, they get to choose. With this background, we made it so they'll thermoregulate horizontally, but they can also get a lot closer to that heat light as well by climbing the back wall. Uh, if you notice in there, the back wall is really cool. We kind of mimicked lava flow. You can see the lighting uh, popping out behind there. It's really nice too that you used a porous rock because it's a lot easier for them to get a good handle on when they're climbing. And that's real lava rock that we used in there. That is so cool. These Euromastics, they're going to get a lot more bright as they grow up. They're not quite adults yet, mm -hmm. uh, but we were lucky enough to find two of them that were, you know, about the same, same age. And uh, Fantastic specimens. Would you guys like to meet them? Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got the female up in the top here. I'll let you hold her first. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello, pretty lady. I know. Those green little cheeks. Mm -hmm. Just gorgeous. I can't get over it. And can we put them together? Um, I would give them some time. Uh, they were raised separately. If you decide to introduce them together, just be careful. Watch for any aggression or anything like that. Oh, honey. Hey. So his tail is whipping around. Yeah. He's being a little bit defensive right now. Mm -hmm. He's new to the enclosure and to yourself, so mm -hmm. he's gonna hit you with his tail just to make sure that you don't squeeze him and you know that you're not a predator to him. Okay. But it looks like he's relaxing right now. He's quite comfortable with you. <laughs> 